Available in the Quantity Kitchen are both the 20 and 30 quart Vera Mixers. When determining which mixer to use, you can consult the Vera Mixer website for information on each mixer. Here you will also find a capacity chart. Products to use the Vera Mixer for would be bread, pizza dough, cakes, and other dessert batters. When setting up the mixer, first attach your desired attachment and ensure that it is locked into place by sliding it to the side. Then raise the bowl by using the lower lever. Ensure that the safeguard is locked into place. First set the timer to either hold or a desired time, then press the green button to start and the red button to stop. The upper knob on the side is the agitator which controls the speeds and should only be used while the mixer is in motion. When setting up the 20 quart mixer, place the bowl onto the knobs and use the bowl lift to get into place. Then make sure that the bowl is locked on either side. You can then add your attachment and make sure that it is set in place by sliding it to the side. Then close the safeguard and ensure that it is locked into place and raise the bowl. Then set the timer, press the green button to start, and you can move the agitator to control the speed while the mixer is in motion. To stop, press the red button. Attachments for each mixer can be found below the mixer and to the side. Several attachments are available, such as dough hooks, paddles, ingredient adding attachments, flat beaters, and whip attachments. When adding ingredients while the mixer is in motion, never open the safeguard. Instead, use the ingredient adding attachment. To keep the mixers clean, both the bowl and all attachments can be placed into the dirty dish return where it can be run through the dishwasher or put in the three compartment sink. The base of the mixer can be wiped down with warm detergent water and a cloth. Then it can be further sanitized with sanitizing solution and a paper towel. Convection ovens are a unique piece of equipment because you can use them to cook food evenly and quickly. This is because there is a fan at the back of the convection oven. You'll notice that our convection oven has two fan speeds to it and a pulse speed which goes in between the two speeds. This is because if you are cooking something lighter such as cake batter you would want to make sure that the fan does not blow the cake batter to a specific direction in the oven. Convection ovens can be used for a wide variety of products, anything from meats to pastries. You'll want to use a convection oven if cooking the item quickly and evenly is important. To turn on the oven, press the power button. Then to set the temperature, press set and turn the knob to the desired temperature. Then confirm by pressing set again. To check if the oven is at the proper temperature, press actual temp and the temperature of the oven will be displayed. As discussed before, there are three fan settings on the convection oven. The one you typically will use is the high setting. On this convection oven, there is also a cook and hold button to hold items for service after they have been cooked. Additionally, there is a cool down setting which will be used when the oven is ready to turn off and a light. When ready to turn the oven off, press the cool down button and you will be prompted by the oven to open the door. Once the door is open, make sure you leave it in the cool down position with doors slightly open. Ensure that you have proper safety gear in order to open the convection oven. When opening the convection oven, make sure that you stand behind the door to allow steam to escape. Once steam has escaped, you can return to the front of the oven where you can pull out items using oven mitts. You'll know that the oven is completely off when it reads off. To clean the oven, use a scouring pad with warm detergent water. 
First, you can remove the racks of the oven and take them to the dish area to clean. You can then use a scouring pad to clean the inside of the oven doors. The rest of the oven can be wiped down with a cloth using warm dish detergent water. In the Quantity Kitchen, we have two different capacities of analog scale. One is 2 pounds and one is 25 pounds. You'll use an analog scale for measuring any ingredients that you may have in your recipe. This may be flour, sugar, butter, anything really. To correctly calibrate an analog scale, ensure that the dial is set to zero. Once calibrated, cover the scale with a new piece of plastic wrap. To tear a scale, place a bowl or any other item you want to tear on the scale and set the dial to zero. Then place the food item you wish to obtain the weight of onto the scale and look at the readout. To clean the scale, first dispose of the saran wrap and wipe down the scale using warm dish detergent water and a cloth. Once you've done this, you'll sanitize using a sanitizing spray and a paper towel as you would a normal food contact surface such as a countertop.